Tuna melt. It's breakfast. Have a steak and some eggs. Not if I have to pay for it, baby. You're not drinking, are you? Lily Tomlin and Tom Waits are lovers having problems, one of many frustrated couples we meet in Robert Altman's Shortcuts, a marvelous adult soap opera of sorts from the director of last year's Inside Look at the High-Powered People Who Make the Movies in Los Angeles, the player this time in Shortcuts, using the stories of hard-boiled writer Raymond Carver, Altman shows us another side of Los Angeles, exposing the strained lives of the middle-class people who go to the movies, such as this embittered couple played by Matthew Modine and Julianne Moore, here preparing to host a barbecue. They talk about their guests, but they're really rubbing old wounds raw. Do you think he's attractive? Who? The husband. Stuart is. He's the kind of guy women find attractive, isn't he? The outdoorsman type. Another out-of-kilter couple, Andy McDowell and Bruce Davison have to deal with an irate phone caller, a baker played by Lyle Lovett. He's upset they never picked up their son's birthday cake. Lady, I work 16 hours a day to make ends meet. Yeah. I bake all night and work oh. all day. You bake all night? <laughs> I thought you made phone calls at night, you bastard. There's more, more stressful relationships as Peter Gallagher tries to get back at his estranged wife, Frances McDormand. Oh, she's not dressed right now. Give it to me. Honey, put your panties on. Whoa. 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 Give it to me. Give it to me. Have a nice weekend. Not all of Shortcuts is bitter. We actually get to see a police officer, Tim Robbins, try to pick up a pretty clown, an archer. Can I go now? No, ma'am. One more question. What's that? How many clowns can you fit in this car? I beg your pardon? How many clowns can you fit in this car, ma'am? Why'd you take my phone number? Well, you never know when you might need the services of a clown, ma'am. That scene sort of hangs there, and it does show some of the loopiness of shortcut, short, weird moments in dozens of middle-class characters' lives. Empty lives, you might think at first glance, but as this film progresses, I found a certain nobility in these people slugging through existence. Shortcuts, intercuts among these many characters, like an extended three-hour soap opera, but it's worth sticking through it all because the writing is sharp, and the stranger the situations we see, the more real they seem. It's a terrific film with Altman having fully regained now his early career form. I love this movie too, Gene, and although I think it actually is more of an Altman film than a Raymond Carver mm -hmm. film because the, the poignancy and the sadness of some of the Carver stories is kind of joined here with Altman's love of these weird characters and their strange ways of earning a living, especially the Jennifer Jason Lee character who oh, carries on the phone, phone sex, sex conversations yeah. while trying to keep her husband in line, raise a family, change diapers, right. and meanwhile having these fantasies uh, on the telephone, that kind of double think, it goes all the way through the movie, people who are operating on more than one level at once. Um, I felt the poignancy that, that you're talking about, though. Uh, at first I was thinking, oh, this is, you know, he's skewering Los Angeles again, just like uh, in the player. But I, I felt that there was a, an empathy for these characters, that they are out there at the forefront, they're away from their extended family. These are people, these are loose ends of people, a couple alone in a room with lousy furniture basically all yeah. their lives. And at, at, at some point I did feel for the battle that they're trying to go through. It's a real good film. When we come back in Butterfly, the story of a Frenchman in China who falls in love without asking very many questions. <laughs> 